एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू एन यू वीडियो ऑन डेंटिस्ट्री एंड मोर सो टुडे इज टॉपिक इज अबाउट थियोरीज ऑफ ग्रोथ सो देयर आर वेरियस थियोरीज ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ हेड एंड फेस रीजन इन ऑर्थोडोंटिक्स द थियोरीज आर जेनेटिक थियोरी स्ट्रक्चरल थियोरी कार्टिलेजियस थियोरी एंड फंक्शनल मैट्रिक्स थियोरी वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट थियोरी is genetic theory so it was given by alan g brody in 1950s according to this theory the growth is controlled by genes as the name suggests the control of growth is on genes so it is more of a assumed theory than a proven one there is no proof for this theory it is more of an assumption so according to this theory head and face grew from growth centers so we know growth centers so the head and face it grows from growth centers the point is under strict genetic control so there is a strict genetic control upon the growth of head and face so primarily genetic control determines the initial features later the secondarily the local feedback and inner communication happens between cells and tissues that is a process of growth primarily the genetic control determine the basic initial features then the local feedback and inner communication that is a further growth that is happening between cells and tissues so this theory is not accepted at all because this theory can't explain the role of epigenetic and environmental factors so this theory is later replaced by many theory this is one of the first theory because uh, because of this uh, genes involvement a part of this was correct but it cannot prove or it cannot explain the entire growth of head and face region because it is not considering the epigenetic and environmental factors of growth which has significant roles in the growth and development of head and face because genetics control only certain features no complete influence on the head and face region suppose if genetic theory is true we could predict the feature of a children from the cephalogram of parents if this is to be true we can easily predict what happens or what would happen for children from the cephalograms of parents but this is not at all possible to an extent we can say that this might happen but there is no complete assurance that this would happen because there is always involvement of epigenetic and other environmental factors and other growth factors but there is a slight uh favoring side the significance of development of malocclusion because uh, mostly the occlusal similarities we can see which runs in families so malocclusion will be of a uh, little significance under genetic theory so genetic theories most of the things are against the genetic thing genetic theory so only few things so that like malocclusion um some similarities which can uh, caused by the genetics because genetics is there definitely genetics has a role but we cannot explain the entire growth of head and face by the genetical theory so a part of genetic theory can be accepted but not completely so this is the first theory that is genetic theory given by alan g brody complete control of genes primary it has the initial uh, control on basic features and there is cells and tissues inner communication and local feedback there is no uh, emphasizing on epigenetic and en environmental factors so it rejected a little uh, uh influence on the malocclusion because there is occlusal similarities in the family so now let's move on to the sutural theory hello everyone uh, welcome back to 
dentistry and more so today's topic is sutural theory so last class we have finished genetic theory so let's continue our sutural theory that is theory of growth in orthodontics so various theories were there to explain the concept of growth and development in the head and face region so the second theory is sutural theory it was given by Weinman and Sisher in 1952 so as per this theory all bone forming elements are growth centers that is cartilage suture and periosteum and the craniofacial growth occurs at suture this is the key point the craniofacial growth occurs at sutures so we can see few sutures over here this is fronto maxillary suture zygomatico maxillary suture pterygo maxillary suture and zygomatic temporal suture so this red section is a complex which is known as naso maxillary complex the naso maxillary complex will grow downward and forward as a result of the suture proliferation so that is the theory of suture theory that is a theory that the concept behind sutural theory the naso maxillary complex so this maxillary complex it grows forward so this forward and downward so this grows forward and downward along with the mandible so it need to be balanced with the growth of uh, mandible so it grows forward and downward along with mandible so there will be parallel sutures that is paired sutures all these sutures are present on the both side so this parallel sutures pushes this naso maxillary complex downward and forward so this is a concept of sutural theory according to sisher what he believe was the proliferation of connective tissue between two bones which causes growth and functional maintenance of bone that is it, it is happening at the sutures and all bone forming elements like cartilage sutures and periosteum are growth centers which are actually responsible for facial growth and assumed all were under tight intrinsic genetic control so it is also emphasizing the role of genetics but is stressing upon the sutures but just like genetic theory the sutural theory also is not accepted well because there is lot of things going against this when transplantation of suture occurred there is no growth so when scientifically transplanted the sutures it cannot produce a growth so this is rejected and um, this sutural theory cannot explain the microcephaly and hydrocephaly conditions and also the cleft palate if the growth occurs at these areas the microcephaly and cleft palate will not be happen or will not happen these conditions so microcephalus or hydrocephalus and also the cleft palate is not explained by the sutural theory and one more thing is the remodeling of bone that is the periosteal remodeling of bone is influenced strongly by the environmental factors not it is uh, it is very unlikely to be uh, under the intrinsic hereditary control so it also did not emphasizing on the environmental factors of bone remodeling or bone growth so uh, that is why this theory is in well accepted uh, just like uh, genetics theory so that's all about sutural theory the other name is sutural dominance theory given by weinman and sisher in 1952 the naso maxillary complex with uh, paired sutures so it pushes an naso maxillary complex forward and downward uh, it is not accepted because it could not explain microcephalus cleft palate or hydro 
uh, cephalous condition and when it is transplanted there is no growth so that's a uh, summary of sutural theory next we'll move on to the cartilaginous theory hello everyone welcome back to a new video on dentistry and more so today's topic is cartilaginous theory so in theories of growth we have covered genetic theory and sutural theory so where the growth and development the theory emphasizing on genetics and the sutures this, the this uh, particular theory which is uh, concentrating on cartilage so this was given by Scott it's also known as Scott's hypothesis so the theory emphasizing on the role of cartilage in growth and development of head and face region so that is the cartilaginous part act as a primary growth centers in maxilla and mandible so in maxilla the cartilaginous part is nasal septum or nasal septal cartilage and in mandible it is condylar cartilage so these cartilages act as intrinsic factors on cartilaginous there is intrinsic factors in growth and development so these factors are present in cartilage and periosteum whereas the sutures act as secondary because they just respond to the uh, response to seeing chondrosis proliferation and local environmental factors but in sutural theory they were highlighting the sutures but this is opposite so intrinsic growth controlling factors are present in cartilage and periosteum uh, whereas sutures are secondary and dependent on the extra sutural influences so we need to recognize the skull as a primary center of growth with nasal septum being the major contribution in the maxillary growth but whereas the mandible we can say that the condyles the condylar cartilage the evidences are the epiphyseal plate when transplanted to another site the growth continues so it was not there in the sutural theory when sutures were transplanted the growth did not occur but the epiphyseal plate when transplanted the growth continues and nasal septal cartilage also when it is transplanted it also shows growth and when it is removed the nasal septal cartilage is removed it was found that there is a mid facial deformity so thereby they can emphasizing on the potential of cartilage in growth and development of nasomaxillary complex and mandible but the problem uh, one uh, problem with this mandibular uh, condylar cartilage it did not develop into or it did not create uh, a new growth at a different site or the condylar cartilage could not continue the growth at a different site when transplanted so it is actually a growth center not a site of growth so that was one of the shortcoming but still mandibular condyle is act as a growth uh, site so this is basically uh, the theory is stressing upon the cartilage so every theory has one key point this is genetics this is sutures and this is cartilage so the two key cartilage in the uh, head or the face is maxillary nasal septal cartilage and in mandible it is condylar cartilage and this cartilage creates or it produces the intrinsic factors for the growth and uh, causes the growth and development of nasomaxillary complex and mandible so that is uh, how the cartilage in theory explains the growth and development of uh, head and face region so now let's move on to the functional matrix theory thank you the nasal septal cartilage which which forwardly and downwardly displaces nasomaxillary complexes as a part of the growth so when growth happens the nasomaxillary complex so nasomaxillary complex the same complex we have seen in sutural theory but the sutures are creating the potential for growth but here it is a cartilage that is a nasal septal cartilage which creates a potential and 
moves the nasomaxillary complex forward and downward. At the same place, the contails, contailar cartilage, it need to be considered as a long bone with cartilages present at the both ends. So it acts as a growth centers and it produces growth. So the growth of mandible is explained by the contailar cartilage. So all the cartilages throughout the skull are primary centers of growth and the growth of maxilla is attributed to the growth of nasal septal cartilage which causing the forward and downward uh, growth of nasomaxillary complex and nasal septal cartilage is a pacemaker of a growth of nasomaxillary complex and as I told mandible it is like a diaphysis of long bone bent with every epiphyseal cartilage at both ends so we know that the shape of mandible so if we bend it it, be, it looks like a diaphysis of a long bone with epiphyseal cartilage at both the ends so that's how uh, Scott explained the growth of maxilla and mandible hello everyone welcome back to a new video on dentistry and more so today's topic is functional matrix theory so that is a fourth theory in theories of growth we have covered genetic theory sutural theory and cartilaginous theory we have seen uh, what causes growth and development in each theory the genetical involvement the sutural involvement and the cartilaginous involvement now let's move on to a different concept that is functional matrix theory functional matrix theory it is all about a functional cranial component now let's see what is functional matrix hypothesis or also known as Mohs functional matrix theory it was given by Melvin Mohs functional matrix theory it claims that the origin growth form position and maintenance of all skeletal tissues and organs are always secondary, compensatory and obligatory responses to temporally and operationally prior events that occur in specifically related non-skeletal tissues, organs or functioning spaces are also known as functional matrices. So actually the main thing happens the structures which are related to these bonds, the non-skeletal tissues, organs or functioning spaces are actually creating the growth. So that is the concept of functional matrix theory. The theory itself suggests that the organs, the skeletal tissues are always secondary and compensatory responses happening because of the events occur in the functional matrices which are non-skeletal tissues. It is a very different concept put forward by Melvin Moss. Actually, it was a work of Van Der Klow and later Melvin Moss modified this. So this space or also known as functional matrix is actually has two unit that is functional matrix and skeletal unit. So in functional matrix, it is again we can divide this into capsular matrix and periosteal matrix so functional matrix is about a one function then cranial component this matrix and skeletal unit so periosteal and capsular matrices the periosteal matrices actually it is influences bone directly it influences bone so this might be surrounding a bone and it directly influences that particular bone through periosteum and causing bone deposition and resorption. So actually it is known as microskeletal units. So bone growth is occurs by transformation that is deposition and resorption. So what are the periosteal 
matrices we can say that it could be a temporalis muscle it could be a blood vessel it could be a gland which causing deposition and resorption of that particular bone and causing transformation growth changes this is known as microskeletal units so bone formation is by direct influences of this periosteal matrix so it could be temporalis muscle blood vessels or gland anything which surrounds the particular bone and the next thing is capsular matrix capsular matrix is nothing but which is a capsule surrounding a ma mass or space so it is a uh, thing which is covering a mass just like the dura mater and scalp which covers the neural mass and orbit which covering the orbital tissues so these are known as capsular matrices so capsular matrix which is a covering unit which actually forms the epigenetic growth factors which has epigenetic growth factors which causes the growth and it creates a translational growth or it creates translational or volumetric changes and it is known as macroskeletal unit so macroskeletal unit the capsular matrices act upon the macroskeletal unit and causing translation the periosteal matrix which is acting upon the microskeletal unit which is causing transformation by bone deposition and resorption so transformation and translation which ultimately results in growth so this is the basic concept of functional matrix theory so basically the totality of soft tissues associated with a single function is termed as functional matrix so basically two distinct types types of functional matrices that is periosteal and capsular matrices periosteal matrices i already mentioned before that functional cranial component functional cranial component is uh, nothing but uh, the function we were talking about uh, it has two components that is functional matrix which is uh, actually perform the functional uh, functional duty of a uh, bone and the skeletal unit which provides a biomechanical role of protection and support to this functional matrix so the cranial component functional matrix is actually act as a matrix and the skeletal unit which provides support to a biomechanical role so functional matrix are basically two types uh, capsular matrix and periosteal matrices so periosteal matrices influence bone through periosteum uh, by direct deposition and resorption it can be temporalis muscle teeth blood vessels nerves and glands so periosteal matrices form the local environmental factors which affect the growth and the influence of periosteal matrices restricted to just a part of bone that is it affects the microskeletal units but whereas a capsular matrix which includes the capsule that surrounds the masses and spaces just like neural mass is uh, containing uh, the scalp and um, dura mater and also orbital mass which is Uh, supporting tissues of which are supporting tissues of eye or uh, oro nasal pharyngeal spaces are surrounded by various tissues uh, that form capsule uh, neuro cranial capsular matrices uh, many matrices are there so these matrices uh, cause growth of a whole bone not a just a part of bone the entire whole bone through a volumetric expansion of capsular matrix it is creating a spatial translation of whole bone or macroskeletal unit so whole bone formation or volumetric expansion occurs by the effect of capsular matrices now let's see what is a skeletal unit now let's see what is microskeletal and macroskeletal unit already we have seen what is microskeletal and macroskeletal just for a comparison microskeletal it's just a part of bone it is forming by the action of periosteal matrix okay so functional matrix 
the periosteal matrices act upon the small part of bone by transformation that is by formation or uh, resorption and deposition the transformation is happening by microskeletal units and it affects the size and shape affects the size and shape okay that is microskeletal unit but the macroskeletal unit it is not just the part of bone it is the core of bone and by the action of capsular matrix okay this capsular matrix act upon macroskeletal unit it is by the process of trans translation that is volumetric expansion is happening and it is the not just size and shape it is the position so positional changes happening with the macroskeletal unit so these two combine to happen the growth of that particular bone so let's see some example and its corresponding microskeletal unit that is periosteal matrices if it is temporalis it is associated with coronoid process tooth the alveolar bone the medial and lateral pterygoid muscle associated with ankyloframus which are the microskeletal unit which is a part of a bone and the capsular matrices such as nasal ma ma mass eye mass and orofacial capsule nasal mass it the macroskeletal unit is cranium then eye mass its orbit and the orofacial uh, capsule the core of mandible and maxilla so that is the basic idea of periosteal matrix and microskeletal unit and also the capsular matrix and macroskeletal unit so according to this theory the growth potential actually lies outside the bone that is a functional space or a functional matrix where the things are happening rather than the bone itself so that is the most accepted theory that is functional matrix theory the functional cranial component its functional matrix and its skeletal units and the capsular matrices and periosteal matrices its microskeletal and macroskeletal units so what are the clinical implications of this functional matrix theory because orthodontic corrections of malocclusion is done either by intraoral or, or extraoral appliances so force application by these appliances tend to alter the functional matrix so we are applying this concept in orthodontic appliances so uh, alteration of periosteal functional matrices produces changes in microskeletal unit that is microskeletal unit and alteration in the capsular functional matrices produces macroskeletal uh, unit changes in the macroskeletal unit so what happens the periosteal matrix that is a tooth this is a periosteal matrix tooth the movement orthodontic after the orthodontic treatment there is change in alveolar bone and capsular matrix such as dentofacial uh, orthopedics like dentofacial complex there is macroskeletal unit that is jaws okay jaw movement or jaw changes will happen that is the capsular matrices so that's all about the theories the major theories of uh, growth we have covered the theories genetic theory structural theory cartilaginous theory and functional matrix theory so these are the four important theories which commonly asked for the university exam uh, the functional matrix theory is little complicated but it is just the two parts and if you have this uh, flow chart in your mind it will be easy so i'll come up with a new session if you have any uh, particular chapter or particular subject you would like to have classes on do mention in the comment box so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you